What's going on, peeps? My name is Simon, and you're watching Soundwave TV, transforming your video experience. Happy New Year, everyone. I hope everyone has had a safe and prosperous New Year so far. But before we get into the New Year, we've got to handle a little bit of business, a little bit of BI, a little bit of backlog from the old year first. I'm going to give you 10 people that took L's in 2016. People who need to do better going forward. Number 10, DC Movies. The DC the DCEU has been kind of struggling lately. And people thought Suicide Squad was average and people thought Batman versus Superman was average and here's the thing. Marvel has an expectation advantage. You know, you're not walking into Ant-Man or Thor thinking it's going to be like really good and then it turns out to be a little bit above average and then everyone thinks it's great dc heroes are like bigger than life so when you come out with a movie you've got to come out guns blazing and you're not doing that now the wonder woman part was good from batman versus superman but everything else was just kind of dull and drab there were flaws but hopefully they can pick it up with wonder woman wonder woman is your last hope to get things right. So hopefully things will be better for DC movies going forward. All right. Number nine. Mighty number nine. Everybody was surprised that the Dime Store Mega Man played like a Dime Store Mega Man. You had all this hype and all this promotion and all this uh, Kickstarter. And all these like pushbacks is like we're pushing back two months we're gonna push back three months we're gonna push back seven months and he finally comes out and they just have the worst marketing it's like you see the preview commercial and they're saying like we're gonna make the bad guys cry like a anime fan on prom night and i'm like is this like a parody for like a real commercial you do realize that most of the people that are probably playing this game are anime fans so it was just like bizarre and it's just like I still want to play the game, but it's just like, after all the pushback and disappointment, it's just like, yeah, I get around to it, want to get around to it. Number eight, Ghostbusters. Wow, like, I didn't think people would like, had this kind of like, um, deep emotional connection to Ghostbusters. And we had a lot of going back and forth for just an I movie. You know, your writing was average. They had that terrible soup joke that just went on forever and ever. The PR was bad. The trailer was bad. And you know what? Like, I think certain ideas have a time limit. And when Harold Ramis, who played Egon, when he passed away, they should have just shut the idea down. Like, Because it's like, you need your original guys in there. And then you had the original cast members, but you had them in there with these, these ridiculous cameos. You know, just like, Sony and Paul Feig did not do themselves any favors by being antagonistic toward the people that were critical of the movie. And I think you use a little bit too much CGI. CGI is just a part of our movie experience now. And I think people just need to understand that. But they had too much. And you had a villain who I really didn't know what his intention was. And honestly, I didn't realize there was this much issue over women in comedy. Because I came up on Mama's Family with Vicki Lawrence and Carol Burnett and, you know, some more. And Adele Givens on Deaf Comedy Jam and... Living single, so I didn't think there was this big issue over women in comedy, and I don't think people were necessarily antagonistic toward women in in comedy roles. I just think they didn't like those women, particular women, for whatever reason. But I like Patty's character. I liked um, Holtzman, uh, Kate McKinnon's character. So I don't know, you know. The profit wasn't that high, and I don't know if they want to try it again, you know, maybe get it right on the second go-around. You know, the first Hulk didn't do all that well, 
But they made another Hulk movie, so if the Hulk can get a second chance, maybe the Ghost, but these, uh, these particular Ghostbusters, you know, Melissa McCarthy and Kristen Wiig can get another shot. All right, staying with movies, number seven, Gods of Egypt. I'm like, they spent $150 million on this thing, and I'm just like, be sure. You know, it looked like PS2 cutscenes. And, you know, it's a funny thing because the people criticized the quote unquote Hotep people for claiming Egyptian ancestry, but people got upset because you know, all the uh, characters cast in the movie were, were white. And I'm like, I don't think everybody had to be black if you're going to do a, an Egypt gods movie but you know diversify the cast you know i guess everyone's trying to get another sword and sandal movie because you know gladiator was big 300 was big and we've been trying to recreate that magic ever since and 300 is really the only one that's came close so there you go everyone trying to get another swords and sandals epic you know we saw ben hur it flopped too so yeah guys of egypt Huge L. Uh, number six, Soldier Boy. I guess Soldier Boy said, um, I'll show Meek Mill who the king of L's is. Because he had a collaboration with Bow Wow. There was a, like six years too late. And then he starts starting random beats with everyone. DJ Academics. Had a beat with Rico Reckless. Had a beef with DC Young Fly. Had a beef with... Chris Brown is just like crazy. Like, dude, people like you have a lot of hits. Regardless of what you think of his lyrics, he's got a lot of hits. And people want to like, dude. But it's just like you run off at the mouth and then you start going cop and please every time it gets a little too hot for you. So, I don't know. Hopefully, dude will do better going forward. All right, number five, Jordan Spieth. Now, I worked out at the, um, the golf course at the Masters this year, and everyone was saying, Jordan Spieth's going to take it, Jordan Spieth's going to take it, Jordan Spieth's going to take it, and they get down to Sunday, and dude gets to the 12th hole and goes quadruple bogey. I didn't even know a quadruple bogey was even possible. Like, I had never even heard of that before. I've heard people going double bogey, even a few triple bogeys, but never quadruple bogey. You know, Charles Barkley is sitting back looking at you like, wow, dude is playing like trash. But, you know, there you go. Hopefully he can uh, get, come back, you know, this upcoming Masters and do better this time around and get a few more wins under his belt. Because he's a good golfer. He just had a really, really bizarre, bad showing that day. All right. Number four. Three to one advantages. If you had a three one lead, things just came apart for you in sports. OKC had a three one lead, blew it. Golden State had a three one lead and blew it. Cleveland had a three one lead and blew it. You see, that's the difference. You look at Kobe, you look at Jordan, you look at Derek Jeter, they closed you out. They they knew. And if you give them a little bit of crack, a little bit of light, they'll run with it. They closed you out. When you're up big, you shut the door, slam the door, keep them out. So I was just like, it was just crazy to watch. Like, you're up. All you got to do is win one game, and they didn't get it done. Number three, loyalty. Wow, loyalty took a huge step back 2016. Verizon guy jumped ship and went to Sprint. As like I couldn't, I couldn't see myself just you know just jumping ship to a uh, a rival company when Verizon put a lot of money in the in dude's uh pocket. But I guess anything for the for the check. And then Kevin Durant, he gonna leave uh Golden State. No, no Kevin Durant leave Oklahoma City and go to. Golden State, the team that just beat them in the playoffs. And I'm like, you know, I've heard of you can't beat them, join them, but he took it literally. It's just like, 
I guess, you know, anytime a player can take their fate into their own hands, because players get switched around like Pokemon cards, you know. But if he doesn't get to the finals and have a real good finals, he's going to look like the biggest clown ever. So I hope he knows what he's doing because he's being at a big risk. All right. Number two, Democrats. Why did the Democrats take a huge L? And it's like you go through two DNC chairs and you lost to a baby daddy who lost money building casinos. And I'm just like, Hillary Clinton, she won the debates, but it's just like she had the same problem that Mitt Romney had and then coming off as distant, coming off as aloof, coming off as if you're talking down to people. And you can have all of the intellectual and experience qualifications, but again, being president is a people job and... Say what you will about Trump. Trump knows how to work a crowd. And I think ultimately that did in Hillary Clinton. Also, you know, um, Electoral College is something they should have got rid of a long time ago. But there you go. You got a president, casino owner, reality show star as your president coming up. So, number one who took an L, cops, bigger, just law enforcement in general. You know, you got Brock Turner getting six months. You know, he, he gets found guilty, but gets six months on a rape charge of all things. And then you're looking at Keith Scott, looking at Philando Castile, just more unarmed black men getting shot by police officers. And we got too many video now because it always seems when it's a white dude, somebody who ain't black, they're always like, reasonable we're gonna bring you in we're gonna talk to you but when somebody black is just like shoot to kill and it's just like we got too much video now and i will say this police officers have an incredibly difficult job one that most of us could not or would not do but we need the upstanding courageous police officers to be critical and call out publicly police officers who do not do their jobs properly because I believe I want to be the benefit of the doubt and think that there isn't anything like bias wise behind it that it's just bad police work but even if that's so you know you're losing the public trust and you need the public trust to do your job effectively so hopefully we can build some bridges and come to some kind of reasonable understanding going forward because there's a huge disconnect between communities of color and police officers. Well, that is my thoughts on who took a loss, who took an L in 2016. Hopefully these entities, you know, these people can do better going forward. Who do you think took the biggest loss last year? Put in the comments down below. Check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel if you're so inclined. Until next time, this is Soundwave signing off. Peace.